Hello and welcome to another video by The Bearded Tech Guy. This video is going to be a little different than my other videos, as this is the first video in my very first series. This series will revolve around a particular smart app for the Samsung SmartThings home automation platform, WebCore. So make sure to subscribe to my channel and click that little bell icon to stay up to date on all the new episodes that will be coming out in this series. This series is intended to create a basic understanding of WebCore, as well as provide some examples of what exactly WebCore can accomplish and how to do it. This video will be an introduction to what exactly is WebCore, covering some of the terminology used throughout WebCore, and I'll go over some very high-level examples of what exactly WebCore can do. Before we can jump into WebCore, we need to take a step back and look at the primary platform it runs on, and that is Samsung SmartThings. SmartThings is an automation system with a central hub that can control and manage multiple different devices. There are actually a few different SmartThings hubs that have been released over the years, and they all support the same automation functionality more or less. There are some differences between them, so check out the link in the description below for a full breakdown. The latest SmartThings hub, which is version 3, has both a radio for Zigbee as well as a radio for Z-Wave Plus. The SmartThings hub allows for the pairing of multiple smart devices and sensors over either a Zigbee or Z-Wave mesh. A nice feature I like about the SmartThings hub is its ability to support both Zigbee and Z-Wave or Z-Wave Plus devices simultaneously. There are also ways to connect other external services via cloud API such as Philips Hue, Arlo, or Ecobee just to name a few. SmartThings supports two methods for setting up and controlling automation, and that is through routines or smart apps. Routines allow for you to easily build basic automation, such as turn on or off lights based on a trigger, which could either be a person leaving or arriving, or even the time of day. Routines are pretty customizable, but they are very limited in what they can do. That's where smart apps come in. Smart apps are classified by SmartThings as tiny programs to decide what a specific device should do when, or to collect information from a specific device. Essentially, they allow for much greater magnitude of customization when it comes to automation within the SmartThings environment. So enter WebCore. WebCore is one of those tiny programs called a smart app that gets installed on the SmartThings hub that in my opinion, unlocks SmartThings to its full potential. From WebCore's website directly, it states, WebCore is an advanced, web-based rule engine that works on top of Samsung SmartThings automation platform and delivers complex automation scenarios that users can program. It does so by using a pseudo-scripting language that is easy to read and understand by users. The installation of WebCore itself is completed through the SmartThings IDE console and does seem to be a bit challenging, but it really isn't that bad at all. I will not be covering the installation in this video, but we'll have a link on how to get started in the description below. There is also a great video out covering the installation of WebCore, which you can find a link to in the description below. Management of WebCore is done via web browser. This is where the word web and WebCore comes in. This can either be done on your mobile device by launching the web browser via SmartThings or on the desktop. Within WebCore, each script is called a piston. A piston can be a rule or set of rules that can control one or more devices based on different variables, events, or changes in state of sensors or devices. Within a piston, you create an if statement that will trigger on a condition or a group of conditions. At a high level, a condition can be based on a physical device, physical sensor, or a variable, and will depend on the type of device. For example, you could have a condition of a temperature on a temperature sensor, or the open-close state of a door sensor, or even the battery life of a water sensor. A condition itself can be very complex and has a great deal of flexibility. Once your condition is set, you then set a then statement. This will be your action, which can be a wide array of things. A few examples of possible actions include turning a light on or off, triggering a smart valve to open or close, or making the mode of smart things change. You can run multiple pistons or have complex pistons that have a bunch of if statements. Let's go over a quick example of setting up a light to turn on when motion is detected. First, we will create a new piston and give it a name. Then we will add an if block. After that, we are going to add a condition of the motion sensor detecting motion. Once the if statement is created, we will go ahead and add an action under then. This action will be to turn on a specific light. After that, click on the menu on the top right corner and then click on save. The piston is now ready to be tested. 
you will be brought to the main screen for the piston that you just created where you can see the piston itself and activate debugging for testing. Okay, let's test out our simple piston real quick. Walking in front of the motion sensor should turn the light on. Awesome! So as you can see, setting up that piston really isn't that difficult once you start learning your way around WebCore. You could add additional conditions or triggers such as only trigger the light during a certain time frame or during a certain smart things mode. You could also set up the piston to turn the light off after motion is no longer detected or after a specified time. These are just a few examples of ways to make this piston more advanced and I will be covering the ways to accomplish these advanced piston configurations later on in the series. That's it for this video. While I do have a few videos planned for this series, I would love to know what things you would want to see covered in the series. So make sure to let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up as it helps out the channel immensely. Also make sure to subscribe to my channel and click that little bell to stay up to date on all new episodes that will be coming out in the series, as well as other great tech videos I will be releasing. Thank you for watching.